Good day, sir. My name is Jose Marie Bautista, and I will be the first reporter for today. Our topic is about process selection and facility layout. Process selection and facility layout are two important elements of operation management. Understanding the basics of each and their correlation can help you to design more efficient production processes. Choosing the right processes and laying out processes in the most efficient manner can increase production output, decrease operational costs, and enhance product quality. So, both must work together. Choosing the right processes and laying out processes in the most efficient manner can increase production output and decrease operational costs and enhance product quality as well. Um, operation man- operations managers continually uh, re- re-evaluate their production setups to look for, for the opportunities to save money or boost production effectiveness. And facility layout refers to the way in which the workstation, uh, equipments, machinery, and employment employees are positioned within a work facility. So the business owners have a range of options to choose from when it comes to designing their facility layouts. And um, depending on the total size of the buildings, yard, and other spacious spaces, they have to work with. Uh, usually, operations managers will set up production facilities uh, in such a way as to minimize the travel or holding time of semi semi finished goods between different stations. What is process layout? Uh, it, it is used by organizations to determine whether they should make or buy items used in manufacturing finished products. Uh, Bullet 1, quality, capacity, and overall cost will be major factors in this decision. Bullet 2 refers to deciding on the way productions of goods and services will be organized. Bullet 3 refers to the ways organizations choose to produce or provide their goods and services. It involves choice of technology, types of processing, and so on. It has major implications for uh, capacity planning, layout of facilities, equipments, and designs of work systems. Uh, The hospital conducted a cost analysis to determine which process will save money and time and which process is more efficient and for them to offer a good customer service for their clients. As we can see in the chart, uh, the first box we see traditional waste disposal system on the bottom of that there is there is a third party agency who collected the waste and disposed it properly so dito may mga hinarse lang agency na pang collect sa mga waste and dispose mga pwedeng i-dispose like mga syringe gloves mask face mask ganyan po so the third uh, box, the hospital will pay a contract price for the service on yearly basis. So dito, yun nga nag nga sila. So yung hinar nila, may contract sila na o oh, sa ganitong year, month, magbabayad kami sa ganitong price. So sa pangalawang box, uh, sterilization and disposal machine system uh, the machines the machine reprocessing or dis- disinfecting the waste and convert it to to recyclable material so ito rin meron din silang binili or hinar na machine para yung mga pwedeng i-recycle, i-recycle mare-recycle hindi lang puro dispose ng dispose kasi kung na-recycle nila may pwede pa silang paggamitan or baka meron silang magawa na pwede na makakatulong din sa kanila so the hospital will pur- purchase the machine and anticipate machine consumables 
maintenance, power consumption, and additional manpower for the process. So, dito naman, like siguro dito bumili sila ng mga generator, solar panels para makalas sila sa kuryente na pang pwedeng pang ilaw, aircon. So, next is the principle of process selection. Uh, the key to successful process decision is to make choices that fit the situation. They should not work at cross purposes. With one process optimized at the expense of other processes, a more effective process is one that matches key process characteristics and has a close strategic fit. So, sa process selection, uh, kailangan lahat ng decision is nag-fit sa situation. Kasi kung hindi sila nagkakaintindihan at lagi lang nagkakross lahat ng ideas, hindi nila makukuha yung, o oh, hindi nila makukuha yung goal ng gusto nilang marating. So, next is individual processes are the building blocks that eventually create the firm's whole supply chain. Sila sabi naman dito is yung uh, building blocks that eventually create the firm's whole supply chain. So, uh, we need to meet the customer's requirements and production within within nung ano, uh, kung anong napag-usapan. Lastly, the management must pay close attention to all interfaces between processes in the supply chain whether they are performed internally or externally. The next is process strategy. Uh, key aspects of process strategy is number one, capital intensive or equipment or labor. Uh, the term capital intensive refers to the business processes or industries that require large amount of investment to produce a good or service and thus have a high percentage of fixed assets such as property, uh, plant, and equipment. Number two is process flexibility. So, capita so capital intensity refers to the weight of firm's assets including plants, property, and equipment in relation to other factors of production. And number three is adjust the changes. So the process has to be flexible in to incorporate such things and design, volume, and technology. So in the chart, uh, you can see in between uh, you have capacity planning and process selection. So capacity selection and process selection um, influenced by forecasting product services, design and technological change and in fact um, between capacity planning and process selection there is a continuous involvement it's not that we do capacity planning separately and once it, it is done then go for process selection um, that, not, that not the case all the time um, there is the information flowing in between the two stages um, and finally, what of them affects facilities and equipment layout and work designs. So the next slide is process type. Um, diversity means having employees from different demographics. Um, number one, repetitive, a product-oriented production process that uses modules. And modules are parts or components of a product previously manufactured or prepared often in a continuous process so number two is continuous uh, a process in which the product comes out without interruptions and not in groups number three batch a process in which the product comes out in groups and not continuously and four job shop is a small company or business that makes specific products for the one customer at a time. It is a manufacturing unit that specializes in small quantities of tailor-made or custom-built parts. Process type 
advantage and disadvantages um num the job shop uh, customized goods or services uh, advantages um, able to handle a wide variety of work um disadvantages um slow high cost per unit complex planning and scheduling number two is batch uh, description is semi standard standardized goods or services the advantage of it is flexibility easy to add or change products or services but the disadvantages is moderate cost per unit moderate scheduling complexity so number three is competitive or assembly uh, standard dice goods or services so the advantages is low unit cost high volume efficient and the disadvantages is low flexibility and high cost of downtime lastly the continuous uh, the description is highly standard standardized goods or services <coughs> so the advantages is very efficient and very high volume but the disadvantages is very rigid uh, lack of variety costly to change and very high cost of downtime so the next is product process matrix so what is the product process matrix the product process matrix merges the product life cycle and encompasses all aspects of the product development process from idealization to a product's growth or decline with the process life cycle the progression toward a more cost effective and productive standardized structure so the product process product matrix describes a series of stages that the production process passes through the process evolution begins with the with a very flexible process that is not very cost efficient um, as time passes the process becomes more standardized and mechanized and automated the end of the cycle is characterized by a very systematic process that is very efficient but extremely capital intensive and inflexible similarly products go through life cycle stages that we are more familiar with than the process counterpart so the process life cycle is illustrated by a product process matrix which represents the interaction of the product and process life cycles automation uh, automation is the creation and uh, application of technologies to produce and deliver goods and services with minimal human intervention the implementation of automation technologies techniques and processes improve the efficiency reliability and or speed of many tasks that were previously performed by humans so the process of automation streamlines uh, a system by removing human inputs which decrease errors uh, increases speed of delivery boost quality minimize cost and simplifies the business process it incom incorporates uh, software tools people and processes to create a completely automated workflow so the this automation uses machine and or software to complete re repetitive tasks uh, dangerous tasks or tasks that uh, require consider considerable strength um, flexibility and endurance the automation frequently accelerates processing time so the machine and robots can replace people and lift more pull more and build more than people and the process automation 
<coughs> is the use of technology to automate repeatable day-to-day -day tasks and it acceler accelerates how work gets done by routing information to the right person at the right time through user-defined rules and actions. So lastly, advantages of automation. Um, number one, improve efficiency, um, reduce workload, um, improve accuracy, reduce errors or human errors. Number three, improve documentation. Number four, enhance security like authorized access only. Number five, reduce job stress and staff turnover. And lastly, number six, improve timeliness. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, the next reporter is Miss Key Andrea Kindara, and she will be discussing about the facility layout. We were going to part of facility layout, which is is in arrangement of different aspects of manufacturing in an appropriate manner as to achieve desired production result. So, facility layout consider available space, final product, safety of user, and facility and convenience of operation. For example, it is important to provide and plan the circulation and the location of the equipment and other furniture so that the facility will be workable and comfortable for the employee and to the others. We were going to the facility layout objective. In this part, a model facility layout should be able to provide an ideal relationship between raw material, equipment, manpower, and final production at minimal cost under safe and comfortable environment. An efficient and effective facility layout can cover the following objectives. The first one is to provide optimum space to organize equipment and facilitate movement of the goods and to create safe and comfortable work environment. So on this part, it is important to provide and plan the circulation of the location of the equipment and the other furniture so that the facility will be workable and comfort comfortable to the employer and to the other staff. And the second one is to promote order in production towards a single objective. By this one, providing essential order, it will be easier to meet the main objective of the company if the furniture and the employee is stable. Third, to reduce movement of worker, raw material, and the equipment. In this part, by planning the location of furniture and equipment, it would be efficient to the worker and to the employee to reach what they need if those are adjacent to their workplace, less tiredness. Fourth, to promote safety of plant as well as a worker. So in this part, by providing a separate space for the ornamental plant, it would be effective if there is a border or boundaries between plants and the worker area so that it will add up giving aesthetic and appealing and balance if there need to rest or so whatsoever. Fifth, to facilitate extension or change in the layout to accommodate new product line or technology abrasion. So in this part, by providing extension or changes in the plan, it is more efficient to set a vacant space or excess space so that the extension are not needed and it will be not crowded. And six, to increase production capacity of the organization. So by creating a plan that is workable and aesthetically appealing, it will be easier to work and will also contribute to the productivity of the organization. Seven, an organization can achieve the above-mentioned objective by ensuring the following. 
So, a proper training must be implemented with all the needs of the company and effective instruction so that the worker will be also effective. 8. Creating awareness about health and hazard and safety standard. By providing a training session, placing signage and act caution, good hazard and safety standard should be seen in the facility or other company like par exit. 9. Optimal utilization of workforce and equipment. Uh, to achieve an efficiency in management or company, choosing the best possible alternate like managing the use of equipment or workspaces so that it will be effective and conventional to the company or other company. The last one is the encouraging empowerment and reducing administrative and other indirect work. So, in this part, by motivating a people and having a trusted leadership like CEO or president or vice president, I think, is an effective benefit for the employee. Empowerment in showing them that they worthy matter and they did a good job. Now, we will go to the factor affecting facility layout. Facility layout design and implementation is influenced by various factors. This factor vary from industry to industry but influence facility layout. This factor as follow. So the first one is the design facility layout should consider overall objective set by the organization. Which is the objective set by the organization should be implemented because they are the one who knows where what they will work since it's their workplace so the second one is the optimum space need to be allocated for a process and technology so the second one is spaces that are not occupied shall be the area for the process and the technology so that this won't be mixed up to other spaces and also be a functional and efficient the third one is the op a proper safety measure to avoid mishap. So accuracy in terms of these spaces and the room dimension should be separate or specific so that there will be no conflict when it's all finished. This may also lead the improper circulation and narrowing the spaces of the company. And the last one is the overall management policy and future direction of organization. In the last part, management facilities or policies and future direction is also a factor in the planning so that a good process and the dimension of the company is organized to flow will follow. Now we will go to the design facility layout which is the principal derived redesign of the facility layout need take into the consideration object and of the facility layout which factor influencing facility layout and construct the facility layout this principle as follow Now we were going to the design layout technique there are three technique design layout, which is the first one is the three-dimensional template. This technique utilizes develop of scale down model based on approved drawing. So as you can see, use this four plan layout has a wide space for working area that has taken into consideration so that the employee can work a group sitting with a space to another. And also, they can reach one another when approaching about business talk. And the plan show two huge lodge room at the upper. Most of the plan of this because at the huge number of the employee that work in the facility or to the company. So adjacent to the huge room is the lecture or the 
lecture room or the conference room where the board member usually conduct meeting and also the stock has a huge face as you can see because it is a huge face for the reason that it is storage at the product or the stock and the supply is also there it is also more useful having an door access direct outside so if the stock or the importing stock will direct to the stock room and prevent destruction and not have traffic inside the office now the second one is the sequence analysis this technique utilizes computer technology in designing the facility layout by sequencing out all activity and then arranging them to circular and straight line sequence analysis you are using computer technology in this part example of the excel or the autocad so the design of the company is not linear for example of the layout in the picture it is circle because the company is small then we need to maximizing the space so we can do it in circular and if you see the arrow that is the direction example of this is the in the picture is the abc so that the planning is good line balancing this kind of technique is used to assembly the line so this is the combination of the sequence and the dimensional technique you can work with the technology and you can draw but with is the different of the line balancing to that too this line balancing is a linear and not a planning now we will go into the four basic type of facility layout which is the first one is the process layout so the process layout is arrangement of equipment and machine in industrial unit is done sometimes on the single line which depend on the sequence or the order of operation necessary product so the first one as you can see in the chart we have office reception minor repair wheel alignment general service and alignment so this is the line and go back line so it is a single line the third one is the cellular layout which is a group of technology of consider a technique through which feasible to identify and group similar or related part involved in the process or production for the purpose of utilizing inherent economy of method of the flow of production you can see at the chart paper okay in other words this part of group technology is a cellular manufacturing layout is type of layout in which different machine can be a group per process requirement for similar set of item or a families of similar parts that require a similar kind of processing of group that form in which that weight so in this part as you can see the the box that's the layout of the cellular layout which is na which is napapadali po nila nakikita yung mga item tapos kung saan po ilalagay yung mga shipping area receiving area assembly area as you can see dalawa yung box ng assembly area which is dapat mas malaki po talaga yung part nila kasi dun po inaayos then the next one is the shipping area mas malaki kasi dun na po tinatambak yung mga ipapadala din din na lang po nila pipick up in that's the example of the lazada shopee gogo express jnt po the fourth one is the fixed position layout this type of layout allowed the product to maintain at a certain place at the required resources such as machinery equipment manpower material etc are temporarily imported the product in the location it is more convenient to ship the requirement tool stop equipment and the materials at the location where the product is assembled rather shipping the product for example different product are like airplane heavy ship 
project related construction and generally manufacturing fixed position as you can see there's a big box but that's a place po so example nasa subic po subic or alonga po doon po makikita natin yung mga example ng mga yate na nandun lang po sila sa place na isang lugar lang po pwede natin puntahan para makuha po natin sila example ng jet ski mga yate yung mga water for adventure po natin doon lang po natin makikita as you can see nakapaloob na po doon yung raw material machine equipment and labor and finished product and craft that's the end of our reporting thank you for listening classmate and sir